Have, have you ever shared that story with people before? No. Oh. You're the first person I've ever told that to. Everybody go. Everybody go. Y'all know I've been talking about this thing for months now, about like this thing I've been doing and filming all. We wrapped last night and I got me a good night's sleep. That's why I'm a little, but anyways, without further ado, where is she? <gasps> Lift the thing and I see their name. I'm always like, Good, how are you? <laughs> Hold on one second, my dog's barking, sorry. Hey, Amber. Let, me set up, let me set up my camera. Hold on. I'm like, you're so prepared with your lights, and I'm over here like freaking out, like, I don't have any lights. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh my gosh, hold on, let me turn you up. Let me get the volume going here. You oh my gosh, hold on, I'm gonna put my hair up, it's like everywhere. No, don't put it up, I wanna see it. Oh, you wanna see it? It's so long, you guys. I see. This is pandemic what? gloriousness right here. How do you manage all of that? I just put it in a bun all the time. Oh. <laughs> yes, oh my God. Jared, well, I don't have, like your eyes just start watering because you're excited. <gasps> I'm so excited. excited. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. This is so cool. Everybody's been talking about it now for like <laughs> like weeks, and so I'm like, yay! Listen, the girls have been terrorizing my <gasps> email, my comment section, and they're like, you must get Joni on the line. <laughs> I'm here, and I'm going to answer all the questions I can. I don't think I'm under any like contractual obligations to get sued or anything. So let's just let it spill, girl. Let's just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Our music to my ears. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so listen, I pulled all the questions from the comment section of my Instagram, the sections of my Instagram and my YouTube. So there's a question that you don't like. Blame it on these mother lovers. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. I think it'll be I think we'll be good though. I'm excited. I am very excited. Do you know that arguably cycle six is considered the best cycle of top model ever? I've been hearing that. Yeah. People have been mentioning that. And I guess there's this whole world on Reddit um, where people talk about like, you know, the, the individual people or the cycles and they say that cycle six is the best one. I'm like, oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be a part of that. And it's so funny that you mentioned Reddit because a lot of the comments wanted me to make sure that you understood that not only is Cycle 6 the arguably the most, like the best cycle of top model ever, that you and Danielle are arguably the best top two that the show has ever had because no one knew who was really going to win. I remember being a young girl, I remember being a young girl, and I was like, I don't know who's going to win between them. Like, I just didn't know. It was like, nail biting to the to the final second i know and oh my god the, the way that they edit that show they make it seem like i'm gonna win they're like calling me out first all the time and then like right at the end they're like nope <laughs> but it's okay I, I'm, I'm for real like i'm really cool with not winning it's okay so it's totally fine because if you think about it number two you're just as good as number one you're both is just as good and you know but i had a little more flexibility she had she was kind of tied down by her cover girl contract whereas i got to go do whatever i wanted so it was I mean, great so listen i'm coming to these questions that the okay. people have given me i'm trying to read these too Ooh, i was never in the bottom two that's correct here and 
five to other girls to send me the um to send me like if you want to read your question here you got to give me a badge because it'd be so many questions and comments and i'd be like okay <laughs> throw back down it's so overwhelming for me so i have to do this okay mel mel no this is from youtube my favorite joni quote speaking about jay is all i smell is <laughs> Can you talk to us about Jade and what was it like filming with her um, in the Top Model House, considering that you two had some run-ins, especially in Thailand, during the course of yeah. like... Oh, my God. Okay, so, like, really, truly, I thought she was a planted actor. Like, I was like, this isn't a real person. Like, I thought the production company must have put her in here to, to just cause controversy. Like, she can't be real, you know? Like, she's so unbelievable the stuff that comes out of her mouth you're like this isn't a real person this is totally an act <laughs> but she's really like that and i i don't want to speak bad about her you know but like i i think the reason that she was always so like controversial is because maybe she wasn't very i mean confident in the end you know what i mean like maybe she was so kind of i don't know maybe just unsure of herself, even though she said she's so sure, she said she's so confident, but then she always attacked people. So, I don't know. But we were cool though, after the show, like we were cool. Like she came over to my house a couple times, we hung out and she's cool. We're not, we're not like, we're not enemies or anything like that by any means, so. Right, no, of course not. Um, Just for all you fans out there who care around comment section about interviewing Jade. I have DM Jade, but as we know, Jade is not active on social media, at least I think. So please know, let this be a documented correspondent to all of her twin fans. <laughs> and she has yet to respond. I know I'm going to have a bunch of comments saying interview Jade, interview Jade, but just wanted to let you guys know that. I'm going to look um, and see if I still have her phone number for you. I'll try to text her. <laughs> if I still have it, I don't know if I do or not, but I'll try. Thank you. Mm -hmm. HSDM 104. Um, hey, Joni, ask her about how her dad felt about cage dancing. Remember when you came in the show and you were like, you were a cage dancer, but your, your dad was a pastor, I believe. Yeah. What were his thoughts about that? <sighs> what were his thoughts about you being on the show and talking about your past as a dancer? You know what? I don't even know if my dad watched it. Uh, to be honest with you, he lives in the country in the middle of nowhere. He doesn't have cable. Um, and I don't, he was really not ever cool with me being a model for a long, long time until it kind of, you know, turned into other things. And then he, he was proud of me, I guess, you know, for kind of dropped out of college to do this. Like I never finished my degree or anything like that. I, I stopped everything to be a model. And he was very upset about that. Um, but as far as like the cage dancing stuff and all that, I mean, what can he do? He loves me no matter what. I, he's never, ever, ever spoken those words to me. He's never said, I can't believe that you did cage dancing. And the, <laughs> and the amateur night thing at strip clubs, truth be told, those were pretty much just like wet t-shirt contests. And I was like 20 years old. <laughs> and I would just, I had amazing boobs back then, you guys. I'm not going to lie. They were amazing. So I would just be like, yay, wet boobies, and try to win money. And that's what I did. No shame in that game. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. I really started cracking up. Um, <laughs> that was funny. Jody, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really started cracking up because I was, my eye caught a comment and someone was like, um, tell her about um, Feronda when Feronda was like, I'm grown. Mind your business, Joni. Feronda <laughs> was so funny. And I remember that interaction because <laughs> you were so like, Feronda, what are you doing? She was like, girl, I'm um, <laughs> I love Feronda so much. She's probably one of my most favorite people from the show, hands down. She had the best one liner. She had the best sense of humor. Everybody loved her. All the, like, the camera guys and all the audio people, everybody loved Feronda. And so, like, she just was the most fun to be around. And I mean, the stuff that they put on, like, they showed of her on TV, she had the best one-liners her and danielle like i cracked up when i was watching i rewatched the show this week so i could like refresh myself <laughs> for you so but yeah brown is amazing but i'm just gonna jump right in and say right now joni don't act like you don't have an iconic 
one liner from Top Model. <laughs> oh, that's as good. I was the comments, every time I saw someone type it out, I couldn't, I couldn't, I just died. Yes. Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> I love coming to Los Angeles. Guys, I'm not even joking. I didn't know what to say. I was so uncomfortable. And then, like, that's before I had my teeth done. So I knew that everybody was looking at me. And I'm trying to talk like this, like, hiding my snaggle tooth. And, oh, my God. And then I get to the end. And I'm like, you know, eh, oh, my gosh. That was so, so crazy. Um, but that was funny. I, I curled up at a ball last week. And I was watching that with my husband. I'm like, I am so embarrassed. And he laughed hysterically. He was like, this is so great. Something, something, and make it through the day. <laughs> make it through the day. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, uh, it's so good. What was that shoot like, and why was everyone so nervous? Of course, I know you guys had to improvise, and you, you guys had to do a bunch of things. But what was that like for you guys? So they, um, they really didn't talk about it a ton on the show, but they made it like a point that you had to be from here to the end in 15 seconds or something like that. So like you had, if the, if the camera went away from you, the camera was away from you. They didn't really show that either, but that was kind of where you had to really rush through the party. And that's another thing when they edit the show, when they come to judging, they're like, you just went past those party goers. You didn't even say hi to them or anything. You're at a party. And, and you, they didn't say that we had to follow the camera. The camera wasn't waiting on us. The camera was going and we had to like rush and follow the camera. So there were so many things about that show that I was like, that's so unfair that they would like, you know, make a point to, to like ding us for rushing past the party goers when we were supposed to rush past the party goers. So I don't know. I could go on because like the editing on, on the show, sometimes it was really unfair. Like they would say, this is your best photo. And I'd be like, what the hell? That is like a terrible photo. I'm like, how come we didn't get to choose? Why did they show us the film and we get to pick our best photo? So then it's truly on us for picking that photo. I mean, if you're going to pick one at, at Jade in the ice room like this, total profile, I bet you 20 bucks Jade would have never picked that picture for herself. Wow. And they're sitting there like, you're, you look like this, you look bad. It's just like, we didn't pick the picture. <laughs> you know, so that was always my biggest pet peeve with, that, with the watching it. I mean, that does make sense. That would be cool, yeah. like, selecting your own photos. And, yeah. everything, and then you going home would have been 100% justified. Um, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> I'm not putting that down in the comments. Because I'm going to get distracted. Comments are funny. No, they, they, could, they could make it through the day. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to create a little, like, gif of that. Make it through the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Charmed P. Aww. Thank you, guys. Charmed is my number one show of all time. I say it all the time during my chats. Um, and Top Model is my second favorite show of all time, but those are landlocked like they would never change. And so, mm -hmm. the, their screen name is Charmed P321 Makes Me Happy. Oh. Okay. Ask Joni about her favorite photo she took while on the show and what was her least favorite. Hmm. Uh, I think my least favorite photo was the the cover girl picture actually it was I, they make you look so silly they gave me like helmet hair and it was all like like this like turned over to the side and they had me like this and if if I look at my own profile I have a nice round little nose they edited my shit to be flatter they made my lip top lip and bottom lip edited to be fuller and I was like, that's not me. Like, are we going to airbrush everybody now? So I didn't like that picture. I thought it looked fake. It wasn't really me. But my favorite picture, I think, was the elephant. It has to be the elephant. It's just so cool. Like, that, that whole day was magical and, like, scary and awesome. And so it was so awesome. Let's talk about the elephant photo shoot because there were a lot of questions asking you about the little snafu that you and Sarah had. <laughs> oh, but not. Was that really like a big thing? Like, was that like a really big thing or was it just something that the show just made to live the, the, gotcha? Yeah, 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 yeah. They kept, like the producers kind of asked her like, 
why did you why did you want to do what Joni did? And like they kind of really caught that. I mean, hey, I'm I am flattered that she wanted to try some of the poses I did. Like that's awesome, but like it wasn't that big of a deal. They really turned it into more than it was. I didn't care. I looked amazing on that. I, I, <laughs> I picked this work. My pictures were good. I was like, I'm happy with mine. <laughs> Were there any other moments while watching the cycle where you was like, oh my God, if that did not happen that way or y'all are really playing this up for the people right now because it was nothing like that in real life. Yeah, so there's so many. Oh my God, where do I begin? <laughs> ah! Okay. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I always thought this stuff with Janice Dickinson where she kind of like had to come to dinner or something to like hang out with us it was always so stupid. It was unnecessary. Like we didn't need to go to dinner so Janice could be wasted around us and just throwing things and like being all crazy. I don't know why we ever hung out with her. Oh, she was, huh? Yeah. This was throwing things? Bro. She, okay. That the, There's two dinners that we went to with her. The second one where she like, where Gina calls out Jade and she was like, you're dead in my book or whatever, <laughs> you know? She was like ripping off her eyelashes and throwing them in the middle of the Korean barbecue pit, like like throwing things around. I collected them. I actually have them down in a scrapbook. I'm like, these are Janice Dickinson's eyelashes. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll have to go get it and show you. It's so funny. Um, yeah, she's like, I, everything with her was unnecessary and stupid, but um, the zip, stuff it, stuff it, zip it, bitch. Yeah, zip it, bitch. It's <laughs> so good. Um, also, I they didn't show this on TV, and I talk about this in my podcast. I try to I try to do little podcasts here and there where I like completely just bleh, like everything out that I can remember. But there was this a time when we went to go see this guy. Um, his name is George something. He was like asking us interview questions, like from Vanity Fair. I don't know if you remember that part, but. He was asking everybody like really tough questions and we were all sitting there. Well, right before we did that, okay, they had a hypnotist come in and hypnotize us all on the chair, right? Yes. And it didn't work for some people. It may have worked for others. I don't think it worked for anybody, but who knows? Um, and then when we went into the interview, he was supposed to say that one word so that we would start doing what we were hypnotized to do. And my, I was supposed to sing, I'm a little teapot. And he said, supposed to say blueberries or something like that. And I was supposed to say, sing, I'm a little teapot. You can ask other girls about this. It's true. Well, he says blueberries and I look at the producers and I look at the guy and I look at the producers and I'm thinking, oh shit, am I supposed to start singing, I'm a little teapot? I'm not hypnotized. Like, I don't know. I'm not like doing it. So I stand up and I'm like, I'm a little teapot. I start singing it and they look at each other like, oh no, what the hell? Like, this isn't supposed to happen. Or is it? What do we do? And I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it until they had the hypnotist come over and like go like sleep like that. And I was completely acting, completely faking it. <laughs> um, yeah, it told, but they didn't make that did not make it on the TV. It was the craziest thing. Totally backfired on them. But there's so much stuff like that, you guys. It, it just like never made it to TV. It's crazy. That is glorious. Yes. Next time you talk to any of the girls from my cycle, make sure you ask them about that. About being hypnotized. That is funny. <laughs> that is oh, okay. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Slate Strike wants to know. I just saw a reaction video um by another YouTuber by the name of um Jessica. Um, to the ice princess shoot, how long did all of that take? And did they actually give you guys some proper aftercare? That was crazy. That that photo shoot, it always took a long time when, when there was a lot of girls, uh, you know, like still in the competition because everything took between like, no lie, like 12 plus hours. Each each thing we did, judging took that long. Um, photo shoots took forever, hair and makeup, all that. So, and then if you weren't shooting, you were just sitting sequestered somewhere and you weren't allowed to talk unless the cameras were on you. So it was completely boring and terrible. But to answer the question, the, the, we were, for, it was so cold in there. Like I was shaking so bad. And I, I remember just sitting outside and just like, couldn't feel my hands, couldn't feel the backs of my legs because they were just like completely numb. Um, but that picture was super cool though. 
But that was a crazy day. Like that would never happen in real life. You know, if this was a real photo shoot, they would have put us in like a like a fake winter wonderland, not a real cold place. I was going to say first, Jody, you know you were that bitch on cycle six. Like, you was a bad girl. <laughs> you were <laughs> <laughs> <Jody. laughs> a bad girl. I mean, I must admit, you were a bad girl. And I would have been, I would have been, I would have been shaking in my extensions. <laughs> I just, you were a bad man. girl. I loved it. Man, I used to admit, I had the best boobs. I'm not even joking. I watched the show and I'm like, oh my God, I miss those boobs. Those 24 year old titties were so great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God. Were there any photos selected of yours while watching? I mean, not while watching, but while competing. And you were like, other than that cover girl um, photo that you just told us about, that you were like, that's not, that's not good. Like that's, that wasn't my best shot. Like, why did y'all choose? Yeah, for for me, I think the the falling down princess one was a very awkward face. I was just kind of like, mm -hmm. you know? but it was really hard to do that. I, they all also didn't show that on camera. I almost didn't do it because I, I was so scared. I couldn't do it. Just imagine standing on top of your table, just like your normal kitchen table, and then just falling off onto the ground. You're falling onto like a gym mat but you have to fall like straight up on your side. So when I finally did it, I was hitting my, my neck going <laughs> all that. I mean, I was sore. I couldn't turn my head for like two days. Um, it was crazy. Some girls made it look so easy, but I almost didn't do it. And they were like, Joni, if you don't do this, then you're going to be like eliminated. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. So I, finally, like, <laughs> I finally did it, but it was so hard. Yeah. So <laughs> Really, like I just remember, um, of course, of course, of course, we must give mother all her praises and things. That goddamn um, Jade as Red Riding Hood falling off that thing was sickening. That um, Danielle falling off was sickening. Yeah. Leslie, photo. Leslie is so great. She, I mean, and she's gone on to be such a great model. Leslie was so young then, and now she's really come into her own and. She is gorgeous. She's, she's got it down now. I don't know. She's maybe just was kind of brand new to modeling then, but she's great now. That's she's good. awesome. Yeah. Okay. So Allison is asking, I saw that you are a carpenter now. I loved you on Trading Places. What made you go into that field and how did you end up on the show? Oh, yes. So I remember I, um, I've always been like a handy person. I've, I've grew up around tools my whole life and like construction and all that. So it was really second nature for me to do. Um, I think also, too, I realized when I was 20, I don't know, 29, 28, that I was just getting too old to model. Um, I just wanted different things. And I remember being at a runway show, and uh, the girl in front of me was 14 years old. And I was 28, and I was like, I am too old for this crap. You know, like, I'm too old. Like, I love it. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. But, like, you know, you're traveling all over the world, you live in these apartments, you have no, um, what's the word? Like, you don't have any, you don't have like a home. You don't have any like consistency and stability. And I really craved that. So when I came back, I was modeling and I modeled in Milan and Hong Kong and a bunch of different places. And so I came back and I auditioned for a home improvement TV show for the DIY network and I got it. And then that just changed everything. I just, I was, I fell in love with it. I was like, this is what I want to do now. I want to transition more into this because I can see a longer career in home improvement. Even if I'm not on TV, I can do these skills for decades to come. Um, and that's what I'm doing now. I, I build furniture. I, I do construction. And then I've been on like several shows. So it's really fun. It's really I, fun. I went down your page and I was, cause I was being nosy. I was like, oh, <laughs> you're building I would have never <laughs> known. Yeah, it's fun. It's great. And I love working with my hands. I love working by myself. Um, I've tried every kind of job you th I think you could try. And I just think this is the most fun. It's great. And you know what? It's, 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 such, a, it's such an amazing thing when you find what your passion is and you're able to, like, pay yourself. Like, it just it feels great to, like, wake up and do it. It doesn't feel like work. No, exactly. Exactly. 
and I, I'd rather do this than anything else, really. I mean, I, I if, if I had the opportunity to do commercials and, and maybe do modeling again or something, I, I would just do it very, like a little bit on the side. But <clears throat> this is this is my passion now. I love it so much. And I don't know. I think if, if anybody wants to try to get into it, just go for it because it is a very rewarding, like, skill to learn. And, he, mm -hmm. and it's great for, like, you know, just the, if you're doing it on the weekends or whatever. And you can always come to my page and I, I will show you how to make things. <laughs> you heard it here, Joni will show you how to make things. Right. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a YouTube channel? I don't. I just, um, editing video is so, it takes so much time for me. I'm just not that good at it. And, <clears throat> and I don't want to pay somebody to do it. So maybe, maybe one day, but I just do everything on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking to a content creator who consults with many, many people, you need to put it on YouTube. I think that'd be so dope. And then you can monetize your content. I know. I'm so bad about that. People are like, you're missing out on a great opportunity. I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay. I'll no, you it. should do it. Honestly, I think you should. I will. I'll do it just because you told me. Yes, and you know what? Okay, mini consultation right now. So you said you said you that you don't like editing and you don't want to pay someone to edit. Okay, here's what you can do. There's two ways you can cheat this. You can either do an Instagram live, take your Instagram live and put that on YouTube, only because when people watch it, their brain is already saying this was done in a live format. So the the expectations oh. like. Oh, we see cuts and music and stuff like that. The, brain, the <laughs> vertical thing tells the brain this was done live, and it doesn't mean like I'm. The expectation sh shouldn't be like graphics and graphics, graphics and stuff like that. Right. And once you build your um, once you build content up and you begin to monetize and you see what your money is doing and stuff like that, then you can say, hey, can can I can you know I I can take this and give it to the editor and stuff like that. You know, just Ooh. idea. Thank you. Are you so welcome? <laughs> oh, to the question. Okay. So, Kel yeah. 12 says, if the top two wasn't you and Danielle, who do you think would have made the top two and could have won? Probably Nina and uh, Molly. I think Molly's, I thought Molly was great. They just really didn't give her a chance. And But she's so beautiful and she's just like, I don't know. And Nina is just classically beautiful. She's, she was great. She could have, they both could have won, I think, you know, so. And I've, I've, I haven't talked to Nina since then, but I've talked to Molly Sue. We're friends on Facebook and, you know, everything. And we, we chat from, from time to time. And she's just like, she's gone on as well to be such a huge model. She modeled in, in Europe and like, she did so much stuff. She really could have like won that competition. So. Why do you think gave her such a hard time? I don't know. I I don't know. There's so many crazy things. Did have you? I mean, I haven't watched all of your interviews, but have you? Has anybody talked to you about how they do like those personality tests to like in the in the casting process? Um, no one has spoken about a personality test. I think the is we've probably come to that topic is the people finding like personality packets or something like that. Um. From Cycle Nine, the Cycle Nine girls told me that. Okay, yes. So I don't know. That's kind of crazy that they found that. First of all, wow. I would love to hear more about that. But um, so I don't know if every cycle is like this. I would assume so. But when we're we're in the top thirty three, they put us in a room and they give us like a like you take like you take an SAT. It's like a bubble sheet. Two different tests that take four hours to take these tests, and you're answering questions like, "Would you ever?" hurt yourself do you play with fire like do you love your mother like all these weird questions you're like yes no like what are they trying to get at me um and i think that it just like shows you a personality type and then i think they chose the top 13 based on like we need a type a we need a type b we need a crier we need a, a strong person we need a weak person we need all these different people to, to make this tv show happen to make the drama happen um that's me. That's what I personally feel like they did. They, and I think maybe Molly was kind of just like an easy, she was a very mature, easygoing person. So it was maybe easy for them to, you know, kind of 
give her a hard time because I knew she wasn't going to react in, in a crazy way like, say, Jade would, you know? That's what I think. But then I'm getting, like, way too, like, <laughs> digging in on that psychologically. But I think that that's what happened. Got you. Fair. Barbara from YouTube wants to know, Barbara Starball wants to know, how did you feel about seeing, okay, no, we already talked about it. I'm so sorry. Um, who did you get along best with in the house? Mm, Danielle. Do you guys still talk? No. You know what? It breaks my heart. I, I don't know if she's just like, doesn't want to talk to me anymore or I don't know. We just never, we kind of fell apart and I tried to reach out a couple times, but I don't know. It's sad. I love her. I think she's great. And we were so close on the show. Maybe she just wanted to kind of separate herself from the show. Maybe. I don't know. But um, she and I were so close on the show. We would like, Oh my gosh, we would sing songs together. We would make up raps. We would, we would <laughs> cook together and just talk, you know, we were just, we had so much fun, especially towards the end there. We were hanging out with only each other all day long. And um, she's a wonderful person. She's so, so funny. So, so funny. Um, and Feranda, obviously, Feranda and I are still really good friends. We, we talk all the time. And, um, but I haven't seen her physically. Uh, since I think I did the Tyra show maybe three times mm -hmm. and I saw some of the girls then but uh, like Veranda and stuff like that but yeah but the Tyra show no that's a whole different conversation <laughs> well let's talk about it girl what happened down to the TV oh god so on the Tyra show you mean yes ma'am yeah so they had me on there several times and they were giving out awards one time they were like these are the top model girls, and we're going to give them some awards for being the best at, at um, the walks and all this crap and all this. And they're like, and the the award for the ugliest cry goes to Joni. The I fierce like, awards. Yeah, the fierce awards. I got the ugliest cry. And I was so upset about this. You have no idea. I thought, you're going to fly me all the way to New York City, put me on national television, and tell me I had an ugly cry. When you knew damn well, I was sitting there in pain with like George Washington wooden chiclet teeth in my mouth for, for two days, like trying to like make it through the pain and the Novocaine. And then you're going to call me out on TV. Like, girl, I was like, I'm done with Tyra Banks after this. Mm -mm. I just thought it was rude. Like, come on. Come on, Tyra. What are you doing? Just my, just, just my personal opinion. I definitely, I definitely can't agree with that. I do think, you know, I mean, laughing at someone else's pain is kind of like, <clears throat> uh, yeah. there's a lot of that. What'd you say? Yeah. Oh, no, there's a lot of that. There was a lot of like laughing at other people's pain and laugh and, and poking and making fun of like, uh, you know, <laughs> they would say pe things like, she's like, she's just like weird. And that's good. Or she's not be classically beautiful she's very odd and that's good and then like you say that to someone's face and they're just like oh i'm odd or oh i i'm not normal or i'm weird and you know it just i just thought that that was always really kind of like backhanded and and a little bit um you know it, i think back then that was 15 years ago i think back then though you could get away with saying stuff like that nowadays you can't say that stuff and you sure as hell can't ask someone to close their gap Hell no. If you would have said that nowadays to Danielle, like, close your gaps, we'd have been like, no, I'm who I am. Like, but I think on the, back then, they were, so, they pressured her so much that, that they, like, they won her over. I mean, she was defiantly saying no, and she ended up doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen her reaction video. It's like, it's pretty crazy what they did yeah. with all that. Anyway. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm off like, Wah! No, you're okay. <clears throat> um, let's talk about Gina and Jade. This is Jonathan Fletcher from YouTube. And he's asking, of course, all the tea with Jade. Um, we would also love to hear about the bullying with Gina. Was it really that bad, the whole interaction with Jade and Gina? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like I said, Jade always kind of picked on people. Mm -hmm. were easy targets. And I don't know why. I just, like I said, I, maybe it made her feel better about herself or whatever, but... 
Gina was a very easy target and she was one of the most like uh, impressionable and weak spirits I'd ever met in my life. And so when it came to Jade, it was just like, there was no, there was, it was just like over, like she was going to cry no matter what. And it was really, ups it was sad. I mean, and then if you try to like step in and try to be the good guy, like, Hey Jade, don't pick on people. They'd be, then the cameras would turn to you and you'd get this attention that you may not necessarily want. So a lot of us just kind of like didn't say anything because we knew cameras were always watching and we didn't want to give them something to go on and create a new line of, you know, conversation. Right. No, that makes sense. You had to play that game too. Like you, you picked it up real quick that you knew that they were looking for like drama. So you had to like, Stay back. Oh, that makes sense. Um, Matthias Two from YouTube wants to know: Do you feel like the best girl won? Um, I thought that was such a gracious exit. <laughs> of course, she. I'm not even joking. The moment we were standing behind up on the steps, up the steps before we came down, we were behind the the wall, and she's sitting there like like praying, and like she's like really like like oh, I really want this. I can't. I'm like, and I could just see it. I thought, I thought, and I, I was like, she, she wants this more than me. She does. It makes me all emotional. <laughs> but like, she wanted it more. So I wanted her to have it. I really did. And she's amazing. She did, she deserved it. And you know, when she did her reaction video talking about the gap and you know, what made her do it, it was like, yeah, like mama, she, mama didn't want to go back to, to the world that she had just came from. And she saw this as a great entry into a life that was different than what she used to so yeah I get that it's true I totally get that I'm I'm the same way I would have I mean God, God bless those people for what they did to me because I could have never ever afforded it on my own never in a million years and it has changed my life I I feel like my muscles are straighter in my face because now I'm smiling normally um I feel like I can have conversations with people and I've I've done sales jobs and been more uh, was, you know, confident in conversations and <clears throat> it changed my life. It's amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, it makes me feel nice. Okay. Matthias is also asking, um, ooh, how did you feel about Tyra calling you out on the Tyra show for missing an opportunity to work for Beyonce? Yes. Yeah, so I, I was working for Beyonce. And I'll tell you the story. It's really embarrassing. And um, it was just like a classic, mis I made a mistake and that was that. So I did the Tyra show and I met with um, uh, Tina Knowles and I think I met Beyonce later. And I met, I think I met Solange too. But we were um, modeling for their, for Darion, for the clothing line on the Tyra show. And they were like, you have a great body for these clothes. Would you like to model at the Las Vegas trade show at, um, I can't remember what it's called now, some fashion trade show. And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. So I did a fitting in Los Angeles and then they flew me out to Vegas with another couple girls. And we were room, we were bunked, in, bunked up in a room and we were hanging out and, <laughs> and Lisa is a friend of mine. I don't know if you knew, knew that, but Lisa D'Amato and I are like thick as thieves, like we're BFFs. And I met her like right after I, I moved to Los Angeles in 2006. And we were, we lived together for like three years. Like she's an amazing person anyways. So she's there modeling for um, some like telephone sidekick T-Mobile thing. And um, her booth was right by my booth. And she's like, girl, let's go out. We're going to go party tonight. And I was like, okay. And I went to this party Oh, this is so terrible. So I went to this party and I met a bunch of these people. I don't even know who they were, but they, they were passing around a joint. Okay. And I hit this joint and I don't smoke weed, but I hit this joint and I, I think there was something in it because I don't remember the rest of the night. I woke up at the Hard Rock Hotel in some room. I didn't know where I was. An hour passed when I was supposed to be at the, at the show modeling, working. I woke up an hour late or, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, I had to get in a taxi, go back to my hotel room, try to fix myself up. I was a total mess, blacked out some, it was terrible. And I get there and the, their creative director looks at me and he goes, that's it. You're going home. And I was like, I am so, so sorry. I have no idea. 
I'm like, I, I couldn't sit there and make excuses. I, I, I messed up. I shouldn't have partied hard. I shouldn't have gone out that night and, or I don't know. It was just a terrible experience. It, it broke my heart. I felt terrible. And then, yeah. And then Tyra brings me on the TV show and she's like, you messed up a great opportunity. I'm like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I know. So it was, it was really embarrassing. And I learned a big lesson with that. Like you don't, if you have, if you work for a big client like that, you cannot mess around. No. <laughs> yes. have, have you ever shared that story with people before? No. Oh. First person I've ever told that to. So. Well. Well, first of all, I'm glad I'm glad that you're still here with us and you know, <laughs> you know, nothing bad happened to you that night. Mm -hmm. Um and thank you for being transparent and honest with us about that. Like thank you so much. And I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of people watching this now. I know damn sure me and other people that will watch this that will listen to what you just said and will take heed. At least bitch, you better take heed. Yeah, you better. I mean, damn. Imagine what I could be doing now if I would have had a great relationship with a big client like that. Who right. knows? Beyonce, we're, we're sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We're so uh, sorry. Okay. Did you really find Nigel Barker hot? This is um, Matthias too asking. Yes. Are you kidding me? He was like scrumptily umptious he was like so again this was like 15 years ago so he was only like 30 something right he's young he's still Not pretty young 30. wasn't he like 35 or 36 back then he's like the same age as tyra isn't he <laughs> <laughs> you better get him jody <laughs> But anyways, he had just met his, like, well, they had been together for a long time, but his wife at that time was just pregnant with their son. And um, we were all like, oh, ladies, he's off the market. But yeah. we sure did. Um, oh, my gosh. Every opportunity we got, we tried to flirt with him. And it's funny, he's, uh, he and I are friends on Instagram, and we, we chat from time to time, and he's just like, I'm so proud of you and everything you're doing. And I'm like, thanks, Nigel. That's really nice. <laughs> thanks, Nigel. That's really nice. Hi. So cute. <laughs> um, this is you guys have to be on point. You have to be fierce. You have to be ready. That was their that, that was their name. Mm -hmm. I will. I feel like I have to say that again. This comes from you guys have to be on point. You have to be fierce. You have to be ready. Oh, Tyra That's... said. Wow. Tyra Banks said that. Y'all be trying to get me when I be reading these things. She said that. I remember she said you have to be on point. You have to be fierce. You have to be ready. When did she say mm -hmm. that? She said that. Top, okay, top model fans, help me. She said that. You have to be fierce. You have to be on point. You have to be ready. I felt like she was saying that before she announced something. Was it when she announced them going overseas somewhere in a cycle? My brain can't get past it now. I don't know. I feel like I've heard it in, in one way, shape, or form several times. I don't know. Couldn't think like that. Five, it's cycle five when they were about to, when she was about to send them home. Yes, Mango! Nicole! <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. I knew my brain was going to get it eventually. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. They're asking, there's an infamous moment when Miss Tyra Banks pretended to faint and collapse. During that moment, all of the girls were extremely worried about Tyra Banks laying on the ground. To be quite honest, I'm sorry. Okay. When she walked in, I could tell she was faking. And when that bitch fell on the ground, I would have looked at her like, well, girl, who finna come get her? Anyways. <laughs> uh-huh. I did. I want to <laughs> right after the Tyra scream, today, why, why, why acting? And I'm talking about behind the scenes. Did she apologize? Did some of the girls think it was too much? What kind of comments did you girls make? And what was Joni's thoughts at that moment? Well, I, I thought I thought it was a little, oh, it was a little much. Like I was like, okay, this is obviously fake. And, uh, but some of the girls really were like worried, like for sure. And like Feranda was genuinely like, oh my gosh. And, um, I felt bad about it, but I knew, I kind of knew it was fake. So I just like, again, I kind of like stood back and I'm like, I'm just not going to react to this right now. And I didn't want to jump up and be like, oh my God, <laughs> because I, I don't know, but I just thought it was a little bit silly. And then she jumps up and she was like, acting, acting, acting. And it was a really awkward moment. Cause we were all like, what the heck is going on? And then the other girls are just trying to like, you know, get through that moment. And it was a very strange, bizarre moment for sure.
Somebody said that somebody they're commenting right now said one of the girls said get some pizza. Who said who said get some pizza? <laughs> I don't remember. Funny. Okay, so Joni, we've come to the moment that I think everyone wants to hear you talk about. Um, and this is about your whole journey with your teeth and what happened with your teeth. So Yasu from YouTube is saying, I like Joni, she was so awesome. My question is, how did it feel when she and Danny went to the dentist to get their teeth fixed, but Danny backed out of it from getting her gap closed, which you've already talked about. Follow up, looking back, would you have backed out of it, or do you stand by your decision to get your tooth fixed? But I also want you to take this opportunity to tell us the full story about you getting your teeth fixed, what really happened while filming, what they had to do in place of whatever, whatever, while filming, and what happened after filming. Okay, get ready. Buckle in. <laughs> okay, so um, I I talked about this in my podcast too. So way like way before they this episode, probably like two weeks before this episode happened, they came to our model house, model apartment. The dentist did his assistant and one of the producers, and they were like, we need to look at all of your teeth. We need to take pictures of your teeth. And this is what they told us. They said, um, we need to make sure you guys have all your, your fillings are all in good shape and stuff like that. Because if you travel internationally and you're on an airplane for too long in the high elevation, your, your fillings can pop out. <laughs> That's what they told us as an excuse to get in there and like take pictures of our teeth. And they were like, look at my teeth and like ah, 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 all these pictures. And I'm like, oh, wow, something's going on with this. And, like, that was weird. So in the back of my mind, I already kind of knew, like, they know. They've seen the teeth. They know what's going on. Like, something's going to happen. And then when they finally, I mean, when Jay said that about, you're going to a dentist today, and Joni, we're going to do something about that snaggle tooth. That was a, that was a voiceover, by the way, because you don't see him. You just see my reaction. Um, he, was, he, he said it much more sweeter than that. And he, he said so much more about, like, you know, Joni, you know, they just want to do something. They want to make, you know, make your smile better. But it was, it was such a wonderful moment. And I remember being completely overwhelmed with like joy and I just could not control the tears. I was so happy. Um, and I left directly from that, from that photo shoot and went to the dentist. Mm -hmm. And so they kept, well, first of all, he went over kind of what he had to do. He, he had been studying my teeth now for two weeks and he said, you have size nine teeth and a size seven mouth. So your teeth are too big for your mouth and that's why they're all crowded. So we're gonna have to pull out four teeth to kind of make room for these new teeth that we're gonna do. So he did, he pulled out, I had already had my wisdom teeth removed and two impacted molars. So I had like already like a couple years previously got a lot of teeth pulled out. I had, I must have had like a, a mush mouth, but um, he pulled out two teeth down here one here and then the snaggle tooth which was right here and it was like way up there these two teeth were like kind of overlapped a little bit my mom had that trait as well as i had the, the that teeth from her i guess um she had like crooked teeth but not as bad this was i was pretty bad and my brother also has very bad teeth so anyway so um they started they pulled those teeth out which was crazy and then they started kind of they just took them and just started shaving them down shaving them down shaving them down and they left like those little like demon teeth i should actually post a picture about it's crazy what they look like there's and i i was like this is it like this so they they shaved down all these all these so i've got 18 little nubs with th four or three empty spots so there's three bridges and the rest are all crowns. They're not veneers. They they say veneers. I guess it's like six one way, a half dozen another, the way you can call them. But they're technically crowns because it covers the whole tooth. A veneer usually just sits on the front of your tooth. Um, so anyways, they did that for, I think I was home. I, sit, I was there all night long until like five something in the morning. I can't believe they worked out. But they had to because they couldn't postpone production that long. So that first night, because I had all those extraction holes, they had to heal. Okay, this is the thing that a lot of people don't know about this. I had to go home that night. They literally hand made me teeth, big teeth that just covered those very tender dentin, like shaved down little nubs. 
and they, they glued them on me. I had spackle all over my mouth and I, they sent me home like that. That's when I was like, look at my teeth. They were literally like, like I said, chiclets, like little glued on chiclets. It was crazy. So they put those on, they sent me back to the dentist. And by the way, I had had Novocaine running through my bloodstream and laughing gas. The next day I was shaking so bad I couldn't eat. Um, you'll see that we went to go meet Janice Dickinson again and I'm, I'm there for half of the interview and then I'm gone because I was so sick I was gonna pass out. So they don't show any of that. Then I go back to the dentist office for two more nights, a long ass time, like 10, 12 hours each time. And then they finally came up with one piece. This is the thing you don't understand. One piece, it was a big, thick, one piece little that I had to wear on the top and on the bottom. They were thick, like thick. It wasn't what I have now. This, this didn't happen until three months later. So during filming, I had to wear this big fake tooth and it looks, it looks big on camera. And you can tell when I'm talking that I'm kind of like talking around it. It's not as clear as, as I'm speaking now. Uh, and that it was just a big giant, one giant tooth. Anyways, I wore that, I had to wear that for like three months because all my extraction holes had to heal and the gums have to come back down before they put those crowns on. So they flew me out to Los Angeles probably three other times to get fitted for the other ones. And then they finally com completed it probably in March of 2006. So in, I started doing this in November 2005, and I didn't finish till March 2006. And then the show aired in March, I think. Yeah, it's crazy. So then, yeah, and then I've had these now, the same ones for 15 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what happened. It was crazy. Oh, my goodness. I probably have like the amount of money that they spent to get my teeth done is probably ridiculous. Give us guess me. <laughs> okay, well, you have, they fly me out to LA three times, put me up in a hotel for two, three days at a time. That's probably thousands of dollars right there. I don't know how much plane tickets were back then. Um, and then I would say that the time and the effort of just the dentist and his his time, his hours was astronomical along with having that other guy who made the teeth he worked at a different office i would say thirty thousand dollars in my mouth right now. i would say yeah now i'm like <laughs> huh and these are the same that that they gave you yeah oh, okay well um is it fair to say, i mean i guess it all worked out eventually yeah it all worked out eventually like you know I mean, it's fine. You just have to be really, you have to really take care of them. You have to floss really well. And, um, yeah, I mean, I would like to get the, the bridges, like where the snaggle tooth used to be. It's just like an empty space. I'd like to get an implant there. So it looks more real, mm -hmm. but that would have, that would be a lot of work. Cause I would have to do three teeth because it, the, it's connected to two other teeth. So, gosh, gotcha, gotcha. Ah! but so it looks like, good. So, no, I'm just... The sick thing. So, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. So like, is there like an insurance poly policy on them? Like, do you have to go get them like maintenance or anything? Like, is it just one and done? It's one and done. And I actually went to a dentist um, back in Pennsylvania when I was done with all this. And he would kind of like, he wanted to email the other dentist and kind of talk to him about it because he said, what they did to you was a cosmetic fix to an orthodontic problem. So my bite will never be good. My bite will never be okay because they can't move these teeth. They're like stuck like that. So I always have an overbite now that I'll never um, be able to fix. And it's just, you know, it, it's just, it was done so quickly. I, I am a little worried that one day something's going to snap off or break, but so far it's been okay. okay. <laughs> I, don't take bites. I don't bite into candy apples now, you know. Oh no. Let <laughs> Well, thank you so yeah. much for sharing that, that story. Thank you, thank you. I've always, I've always wondered, like, you're welcome. Yeah. Hey, no worries. Momo, that's a nice name, Momo Montez. Whoever you are in this world, I hope you're doing great things because you have a great name, Momo Montez. How hard was it going on ghosties in Thailand? Because everyone got disqualified. <laughs> yeah, totally. 
Yeah, they set us up for failure with that one, though. They were like, you have like six or seven places to be and you have you have a language barrier and you have a map, you know, and, and we all I mean, a lot of people don't even remember using maps. No, some people were like, what's a map? Right. <laughs> so you're like, you're opening your map, you're looking at the address, like you, you find it like D6, and then you know where it is on the map and you tell the guy and it's just like, it was really hard. And then they, uh, they were like, you got to go to as many as you can. And then, you know, I didn't go to maybe three of them. I, I didn't make them make it to all of them. And uh, yeah, it was really crazy. And uh, <laughs> they didn't show this, but like, one time we were going through this back alley, me and my tuk tuk driver, and there was two wild dogs just like fighting like, <laughs> like a, right by the open door and I was like <laughs> <laughs> like kicking them it was pretty funny but yeah that was crazy that was a crazy day I just remember from Ghosties Danielle Danielle um talking to the man and you can tell like she's making him so frazzled and his like hat is falling off and she's like uh uh we got to go we got to go don't pass it on don't collect two hundred dollars <laughs> I'm telling you, the one-liners that girl have are amazing. She's hilarious. Um, and then, yeah, that was that was so that was really funny. And then Jade and her confession was like the putt putt, the hut hut, the toot toot, the woo. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Okay. Oh, so good. Jam R is apparently you were in all stars as a stand-in in case someone else could not be on the show is there any reason why you were just a stand-in and did not participate in anything all stars related even if if this is true i was not i never like they they called me up and they were like do you want to be on all stars and i'm like yeah that'd be fun like so they, they literally had me do an whole like an application I had to redo like an application process and fill this paperwork out and sign everything and send it in. But then they never called me. So I never, I was not a stand in. I just never did it. Are you yeah. happy to do it, girl? Because Cycle 17 was a mess. I honestly didn't watch it. Oh, well. It, but like I said, I'm really good friends with Lisa. And so I would have never wanted to go up against her because she's, she's amazing and she's completely different than me. And she's an amazing pose. She's just a fabulous model. I love her so much. I wouldn't want to go up against my best friend. That'd be weird. That would be weird. Michael <laughs> is asking, how do, you, how, do you, how do you feel about coming back on Cycle 8 and upstaging Renee on her own photo shoot? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I mean, I don't know. I actually just watched that the other day, too. That, that, was, that was actually a lot of fun. And I popped in and popped out. But um, I don't know. I was thinking I was there for like two hours. It wasn't that long. It was just fast. Can we take this opportunity for you to um, tell us the difference between you being on cycle six and not being paid and you being on cycle eight and you still getting residuals? Because, you know, I've heard, we've heard Ferrana talk about it. We've heard other girls talk about it. But I don't think the fans out there know the difference in the terms in the different contract thingies. Can you explain to us? Yes. So when you're on the show as a contestant, you kind of um, sign, it's, it's, you're almost like, uh, you only get per diem. So like they'll, you are participating in their competition and they want to like give you a, 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 a little bit of money each day. I think we got like 20 bucks a day or something like that. And at the end of each week i think we got like a check or they gave us like an envelope with cash in it and we would spend it on groceries and stuff like that but mm -hmm. because you were participating in the competition you weren't being paid you were kind of like being used by them if you will but mm -hmm. when you are done with the show and you're going to make an appearance on another show um we also during um, let me backtrack a little bit mm -hmm. during our cycle we became members of the aftra um, actors guild they had us all sign up to be on Astra um, because after the show was over, you, when you're a part of the actors um, like like SAG or Astra, you can um, get residuals. I don't know. It's kind of like a weird. It's just like this weird acting thing. But after that, you're just kind of like an employee. So you get a 1099. You fill you fill out like your tax form and stuff like that. They sign a little agreement, 
you're going to get paid a thousand dollars to make an appearance on cycle eight or whatever it was. I actually have no idea what it was, maybe 700 bucks or something like that. And, um, and then from then on, every time it airs on television, because you're a part of the actors union, you get a residual because the networks are buying that episode. So like UPN or CW, whatever used to own that show. Well, now that it's been put on to different networks, that network purchased that show and therefore you get a little piece of the pie. So every time it airs on any network, whether it be in like Paraguay or Costa Rica or Ecuador or whatever, like it's, we're getting money for that. So sometimes I get residual checks for like $12. <laughs> I got one for like 33 cents. <laughs> but it still comes in. Yeah. But that's about it. It's not big. It's not like huge residual checks or anything like that. Gotcha. It's literally $2 or something, but it's fun. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to combine two fan questions in they wanted to ask, um, they heard that you took a year off modeling after the show. They wanted to know about that and how was your modeling career. And someone else, Garcia wants to know, were you able to use any of your top model photos in your model book? Oh my God, okay. Well, actually I moved to Los Angeles the, la the day after the finale aired on television. So Tyra had called me and was like, hey, there's an, there's an agency in Los Angeles, they love you, they want to um, represent you. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go off of Tyra's recommendation. So I went out there, immediately started modeling. I didn't take time off, I immediately hit the, hit the pavement. I was with a, uh, an agency called New, N-O-U-S, in Beverly Hills, and I just, it was like a little boutique agency. And um, I just started modeling right away. And then I, I did, I modeled like on and off for like a year and a half while, when I lived in LA. And then I, I moved out of the country and went and modeled elsewhere because I would go to castings in LA. I didn't have a ton in my book. I started like slowly building my book, but I had all my top model pictures in there. I remember going to a casting and like handing the guy my book and he opens it and he goes, nope. <laughs> they, I was a joke. People thought this reality TV show was like a total joke. I, a lot of people didn't want to hire me. They didn't want to come near me. But then there was other people that were like, this is amazing. Uh -huh. want to work. So it was a very double-edged sword. Like sometimes it was like great. Sometimes it was not so great. Uh, but then, you know, like I said, after I had modeled for a while, I started slowly taking those pictures out of my portfolio, unfortunately, because in America it wasn't, really that cool but when I went to Asia for example that's all that they wanted they would like hire me because I was Joni from Top Model so I did really really well and not in America <laughs> I did well outside of the country which is funny hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. so a lot of questions I got um, about you and your relationship with Raja during this cycle during my cycle with Raja, wait. The makeup artist. Yes, a lot, of, a lot of people wanted to hear you talk about, and I also saw some comments down here in this live right now, they wanted to hear you talk about your relationship with Raja, the makeup artist, if, if any, um, during filming of, of Cycle Six. He was the person that we went to, like, they don't really show this at all, but we became such good friends with all of our makeup artists, all of the, hair people, all of the wardrobe people actually lived with our wardrobe stylist for a little while when I moved to LA. His name's Charlie. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's great. But Sutan is like, he was the person that we turned to when we, we needed to laugh with, when we were like sad, he would talk to us and sometimes they, they put him on camera and sometimes they did not. But even to this day, I, I talked to him, I was going to go up to his house um, here the next couple weeks to help him with some stuff, some home improvement stuff. <laughs> but uh, he's wonderful. And he, he's just, I don't know, he's probably one of the cooler people that worked on behind the scenes. So gotcha. yeah. love Raja. Um, I love Raja, of course, from Top Model and subsequently Drag Race. Drag um, Race, yeah. Our earlier oh, my eyes when you said his name it, it was it wasn't because you said his name it was because you said it was a voiceover and i get so sick of voiceovers on top model like their voiceover editing is horrible horrible 
I could even tell when I was being dubbed over. I'm like, I did not say that there. Also, too, I can catch, like, it's all over the show. There are times when, like, I still have my bad teeth, and then they put me in saying stuff. Like, um, yeah, it's, I'm like, they edit terribly. They're just trying to put things, like, all over the place. It's bad. They don't care, though. <laughs> What were some of the things that happened that you wish could have been shown on the show? Hmm. I have to think about that one for a while. I'll come back to that. I'll think about that. So you let's let's try a different question and I'll come back. I'll start thinking about that. Joni, what's your favorite song? I saw your <laughs> You were talking about R&B with her, and I was like, oh, my God, they love all the same music I do. I'm like, this is so awesome. And I love that she liked the old school stuff. You know, I thought that was awesome. I was just listening the other day. Um, I love Deborah Cox. Like, if I could sing like her for a day, I would just, like, that would be my dream. She's amazing. Um, which, one, which song do I love? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, like... Of course, like, how did you get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. You know, that song is like, what am I? Like I said, I wish I could sing like her. Um, no, no, no. Just give me a little bit. I'll start it off and you finish it. Okay, go. Okay. Oh. How did you get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. Nobody's supposed to be here. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. That love thing for the last time. I'm terrible. My heart says no, no. Nobody's supposed to be Oh, come on. She's wonderful. She's the best. I also love Tamia. Tamia has an amazing voice. And then I was listening the other day to um, Escape. Come on. It's so good. So good. What's on um, here? Oh, um, You Put a Move on My Heart is like one of my favorite songs. I love it so much. I just, I, she gives me chills. I listen to it and I'm just like, oh my God. Do you want to hear something amazing? Do you know the singer Kiki Wyatt? Yes. Okay. So Kiki Wyatt did a tribute to Tamia at like some thingy. I can't, I, I can't, I can't call it. But Kiki Wyatt, of course, in Kiki Wyatt fashion, comes out pregnant with blonde hair and red lipstick. And she sings, um, you put a move on my heart. When I tell you mother destroyed it. Really? I'll have to look that up. I'm going to DM you that video. I watched okay. it at least every other day. Because I'm like, how does she come out in one minute and destroy this woman's song with her sitting right here? Wow, I would love to watch that. I love I love that song so much. I love that song too. Okay, guys, <laughs> I don't have any more questions for Joni. Everybody who got a badge, this is your time now to um, put your questions down and I'm going to ask Joni live your question. Would you do it if they asked you to do it again for All Stars? If there was a second All Stars, I would be there. Bro, it's a trap. It's a trap, but you know what? I would do it. Could you imagine I'm 40 years old and I'd be like, hi. <laughs> it was I'll be 40. Now, 40. I'll be 40 next year. Don't say that. No, you won't. I know. No, I'm not. I'm going to be 31 again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you saw Tyra Banks right now in 2021, what would you say to her? I'd be like, hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would say, hey, Tyra, how are you? You know, thanks for changing my life, girl. Shout out to Tyra Banks. Shout out to Tyra Banks, businesswoman extraordinaire, yes. no nonsense lady. Oh, and I saw somebody ask if I have children. I do not. And I will. Isn't that funny? Children. How I was like, I want to be a mom. I'm like, no. I can't. I can't do it, guys. <laughs> I'm too old. You can't, as in, like, you don't want to do it? Yeah, I don't want to anymore. I feel like the world is such a terrible place. <sighs> Is that bad that I just said that? The world is just so crazy. I don't want to bring a baby into this world. I'd rather take care of the babies that are already here, like all my family, and make sure they have a wonderful life, and just like, that's it.
Okay, Alec McCosey is asking, what was your favorite challenge you let the girls, you let the girls have it with your church fashion show? You slayed that. Thank you. That was actually really, really fun. <laughs> and also another um, challenge where it was very unfair because they gave Jade a cape. She was the only one with this huge cape. And of course, when she swirled and twirled, she looked amazing. So of course she won. That Jade. But no, I, I came for Jade that day. I really did. That, that I was ready. Is, that's one of my favorite top model isolated moments, watching Jade twirl and twirl down that runway. It was good. Yes. Um, okay, here we go. So, so Ball Bal is asking, talk about, talk about all the girls in your cycles in order of elimination. Okay. Well, we'll breeze through this one real quick. I will. I got you. The first girl to go home was Kathy. I remember Kathy. Yes, I remember Kathy. Um, she was just a sweet, like, she was exactly what, what she was. She was a sweet, sweet girl. And, uh, yeah, I haven't talked to her since then, but I hope she's doing well. Wendy? Wendy, again, someone I never saw again. And I thought she was the sweetest, nicest person. Um, and people just fell off. Carrie. What's that? Carrie. Carrie. Okay, so we actually just recently became reacquainted. Um, she's married and she has a little baby girl and she's doing really well. She's a nice person. Gina. Gina, never saw her again. Never heard from her again. And I really didn't get too close to her on the show. She was, like I said, she was very, she was a lot of drama. Ooh. You talked about Molly Sue and Leslie. Brooke? Brooke never saw her again either. And I was so bummed about that. She was such a nice person. Everybody was so nice. We didn't really have anybody that was not a nice person on the show. Gotcha. You talked about Nina. You talked about Veronda. What about Miss Sarah? Sarah, um, I never saw her again, but we are friends on Instagram. And she has three kids. And she's with that same guy. And they live in... Washington, D.C., oh. I think. Or and somewhere near there. Oh. Who? Jade? Sorry, I can't. Jade. Mm -hmm. Jade. Jade, okay. Jade, oh, like I said, I thought she was a fake actor. I can't believe that this, she's a real person in real life sometimes. She's just very, one of the most unique people I've ever met in my whole, whole life. Um, probably one of the most banging bodies I've ever seen in my life. Like the tiniest waist. I mean, just beautiful, like features. I think she was, she is really a beautiful girl. Um, we hung out a couple times, but I haven't talked to her in a long time. Did they really misunderstand that Nick Cannon challenge or was that just editing? No, she didn't get it. She didn't get it. I did they, uh, I don't think she got a lot of things, but. <laughs> It's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, Jade. You look, you a cold girl. Um, someone said, "Would you rather lip sync? Would you rather lip sync against the Jays or Raja?" The Jays. Raja would de destroy me. He's he's the best. She already talked about her falling photo shoot. I'm gonna upload this video later to my YouTube. How was the final runway? Can we talk about the final? How was the final runway for you? It was, it was fun, but it was also really crazy. So I had uh, platform shoes on that had like a, a consistent wedge the whole way. I didn't have like an independent heel and, mm -hmm. you know, so it was a big flat surface and those yellow flowers that were all over the runway became mush when people walked on them slip. So I was slipping, slipping, slipping. So I couldn't really do a big, long, heavy, wide step gait like I wanted to do. That's why she said I look like I'm walking through the mall because I was about to fall down on my butt. So I, um... That was my one complaint with that. And it was so hot. It was probably 100 degrees outside. Um, and then I went backstage and people would like pull my earrings out, start pulling my pants down, like just dressing me. I had never experienced anything like that before. That was so cool. I felt like I was like really like at a, at a crazy fashion. Like I felt like such a model at that moment. But um, yeah, that was a fun day. That was really fun. Um, the people want you to talk about the high heel challenge during panel. My lucky, my lucky, like, 
fairy godmother was with me that day because I don't know how I didn't fall. It was crazy. And um, I, I honestly think that was probably one of the stupidest things they could have ever done on Top Model because if anybody that they liked, let's just say one of their front runners, let's say Danielle broke her ankle that day. Like she almost you did. You don't have a show anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't let you can't do that kind of stuff to people and put them in these predic predicaments where you could actually get physically hurt. I think that's just stupid. No, that is. <laughs> was there anything? Somebody just asked. Was there anything drink did not see? Anything said that happened did not see? It. It. What part? Um. Throughout the course of the of the cycle. That we did not see. Mm -hmm. Probably, like I said, like the hypnotizing thing, like that didn't make it to TV. We didn't see that. Um, there was just a bunch of little things that we did. Like we went to a couple places like for fun little excursions. So we went to a place called Tank Farm. We made, we made our own t-shirts. Um, that never made it to TV. Uh, you know, there was times when we got like when we did the the four seasons photo shoots for Sears and we had all that the makeup and stuff like that those are the clothes that we wore for the rest of the season so anytime we got free stuff we wore it like we would wear like the shoes and the jeans and all the clothes and the makeup and they never really showed you that um also too when we lived in the house there was no um magazines no books no tv no radio nothing no outside stimulation whatsoever so we only had each other to talk to mm -hmm. we never really got to see that but we also had um the lights were controlled by the house next door so the model house had a, a production house next door and they would turn the lights off at night so we couldn't even control our own lights and all of our bedrooms had cameras in them so if you had to like get naked and you wanted some privacy i had to hide in my closet <laughs> <laughs> so the cameras didn't see me. Crazy. Um, and the last question I want to ask you before I let you go, because we've been on for an hour and 30. Do you still have <laughs> high head warrior figurine that you won? I do. My mom has that and it's in her house on her um, fireplace right now to this day. She's well, very proud of me. <laughs> I thank you so freaking much for doing this with me. I am so You're happy. Welcome. Well, they are very happy because you shared a lot of stuff with us today. Good, good, good. If there's anything I forgot, just DM me and I can I can do my best to answer you. Yes, yes, you guys. Please DM her. And can you please shout out this podcast that I've heard you plug throughout this this time together? Yeah, so I, I do a podcast called The Little Bit Podcast. It's on Spotify, iTunes, um, wherever you listen to podcasts. And I talk about everything except politics. And I have a few really great top model podcasts on there where I talk about my, my experience, share a couple little secrets, which I pretty much told you all anyways today. Uh, and then I have, I interview people that were on the show. So like the guy who used to drive us around, um, you know, hear his stories and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. The little bit podcast. Nice. Anything else you want to shout out? Uh, I want to shout out you. Thank you so much for like, reaching out to me and, and everybody that reached out and said, you got to do Oliver's, you've got to do Oliver's live. And so, there, I mean, just, this was a really fun experience and I had a great time. I'm so glad you guys um, were, join, were joining us today. It was awesome. Well, listen, when I come out to California, Lisa has already invited me out to the castle. So hopefully when I come to the castle, you will be there. <laughs> yes, please. I would love that so much. Um, and yes, you got, you got, did you already have Lisa on your live? Yes, I had Lisa on my live. <laughs> okay, good. she's amazing. Okay, cool. I can't wait. Hopefully you come to California soon and all this will be over. All this pandemic stuff. Well, thank you so much. Everyone send Joni kisses, hugs, and all the great positive energy as she leaves from giving us an amazing, an amazing pop model cycle six breakdown. Woo! <laughs> Love you guys. Love you. Thank you. Have a good Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Listen, guys, I love you guys so much. I actually have to jet. I have to jet. I try to wake up my boyfriend to tell him to go get something that's outside for both of us, but some type of way, I guess, mama's went back to sleep. So I'm going to leave this 
right now until you guys this video will be uploaded on my youtube channel later yeah i'll probably upload this later and premiere tonight so you guys can have it i love you guys be sure to crate and kegel because no one needs to be walking around in 20 going to 2021 with loose um things and things love you guys be safe merry christmas